Welcome back! For today's video I'm going to show you how to pack like a minimalist. So as you can see here I pack pretty lightly. This is a 6 kilo backpack here with uh, pretty much everything that I have been using now for the last two months or so. Um, yes, it's been two months since I filmed the last video. As you can see my hair is a little bit longer and my uh, skin is a little bit darker. Hopefully not more wrinkly though. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you here. Uh, this video is going to focus on how to pack really lightly, you know, one bag, how to pack for carry-ons only. I also have some motorbiking equipment here, uh, gloves and uh, I could show you on the GoPro actually. I have gloves as well as uh, the helmet and I also keep this wool buff that I wear when I drive. Um, th this one is really nice actually because you can use it to wipe off sweat, you can use it as a face mask on a plane as well as um, well to avoid getting sunburned and getting ants in your face so everything. <laughs> so yeah moving on here. Uh, I also keep a uh, money clip here and uh, this is just for my pocket. I'm gonna dig one more into this later but I just wanted to get this out of the way so that we can focus on the actual bag here. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about what type of uh, clothes that I like to bring, what, what things I consider before I pack something, as well as uh, um, my mentality when I pack and what I think is worth bringing. I also want to show you what's inside of course. Uh, I'm sure many of you are really curious how you travel around with this little stuff. And uh, yeah, by the way the bag that I'm using here is the Bobby Urban uh, something, I don't remember. It's slightly modified. I've added some um, straps to it so that it supports, doesn't hurt so much on the shoulders and back, as well as a GoPro mount. You know, since I've been. Uh, by the way, I have a second channel now that you can check out if you're interested in seeing more travel diary stuff. It's just for fun. Um, but yeah, you can check that out if you're a fan of travel in Thailand. So let's get started here. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the safety and that is one of the most important things when you travel with expensive equipment especially is the safety of the things. For me if I go on a trip and I can't be sure that my stuff is safe I don't feel, feel comfortable. Been in too many weird situations uh, before like this so what I have done is that I have created created I say. I bought a waterproof pouch here where I keep my most important belongings and this is at the back of my bag as well where as you can probably see here this one is really nice because this pouch actually allows me to this is my swimming pants so what I've added is a zipper pocket here so I, if I have my phone filming it right now but if I have my phone, I can stuff it into this waterproof pouch together with my money, close it up, and I'm ready to go swimming. Uh, which is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it's, it makes the uh, beach life a lot easier. Also creates some anti-taft um, to the zippers. Uh, for the pads, I've actually created another solution as well. So when I was in Brazil, I was a little apprehensive of uh, bringing around a lot of money, my phone, you know, the, the new iPhone, what will happen. So what I did is um, that I sewed in this little um, elastic on the inside of my jeans. So what this does is allow me to take that pouch that I put in my pocket here. Mm. And I can actually put it inside here. As you can see these straps, I just open this up, put it in, close it and my passport, stacks of money and sometimes even the phone will be entirely safe in there. So that's just something. Uh, another thing to say is that I always travel with the pants on so that's why it's not in the bag right now but I wanted to show you this. Uh, Denim jeans, especially stretchy ones, most versatile pair of pants you can possibly find out there. So, moving on here, uh, we have passport and this type of stuff. This is of course interchangeable, but I do like to keep it in the back here. When you change your towel, you need to show the passport, police stops you, passport, uh, you know, license on registration. And this type of stuff, which is really nice to just keep handy. Um, this probably doesn't apply to a whole lot of people though, but for me this is kind of important stuff. 
move that off into the side here and let's get into the bag. So yeah, this is the anti theft proof bag. Sorry, this is the theft proof bag here. As you can see, it's, um, I think I did a review about it in the past, but it's slash proof so people can't cut into it. Also, it's um, locked with steel reinforced and um, it has a code for, to see inside, to get inside it. It's really nice, it's not waterproof, but it's a beautiful bag. So how I like to do it inside here is that I section things off into different uh, use areas. For example, I have toiletries bag. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but beyond that, I also have a technology bag where I keep all my technology. And I have these packing cubes, compression packing cubes. Uh, this is kind of where I've been inspired to make the block rolling system actually. And um, yeah, another one. Can't just have one packing cube that could probably get away with it, but realistically that's not going to work for many people. Also keep a long sleeve, it's uh, called sweatshirt for driving on the highway. You know, I don't want to end up with like a human crayon. <laughs> so that one is nice as well. Uh, and I keep some sunglasses, two pairs of sunglasses here. And uh, lastly, also computer bag, because it's too big to fit in here. Tried to travel without a computer in the past, didn't feel good about it, so I think it's for the extra weight. And that's everything that's inside. Uh, besides that, I have a side compartment here. Just keep a face mask. Uh, this is the Uniqlo's uh, face mask, they're really nice. They breathe pretty well and don't get too hot. And I think they look pretty good too. All right, so let's get into it. So, how are we gonna start here? Uh, let's start out by talking about the clothes since this is a folding channel. Um, I do keep one sweatshirt and uh, this is also the same Uniqlo fabric, which is uh, Aerism, I think. It breathes really well. As you can see, I folded it up uh, in the classical uh, way that I like to do with the pocket that style for hoodies and uh, I'm gonna link video here if you don't know how to fold it like that. And uh, yeah, for the actual packing cubes, these are compression packing cubes. If you haven't heard about compression packing cubes before, it's essentially like the, if you know packing cubes, it's like cubes that you can put your clothes into so you can organize everything. Say you have a bunch of underwear, you put it in one cube, a bunch of t-shirts in another one. Uh, a lot like the blocks or you know, just sectioning off your dresser. It works a lot similarly just for travel. This one has the added benefit of having compression, which essentially squeezes the clothes together. Mm. You can see this is the original size and when you press it down, sit for all the way around here and end up with a bunch uh, more space in your bag. <laughs> it doesn't help with the weight though, but it's really nice for the space setting, um, especially for such a small bag like this one. Makes a huge difference. So yeah, how do I, do I pack? Well, usually I like to keep clothes inside her in uh, these travel cubes or travel what you call it travel cylinders I have done a video on this in the past but I think it's worth going over it one more time so I can show you uh, how I like to do this so another thing to mention is fabrics so I do like merino wool the most but it's also the most expensive the reason that I like merino wool so much is that it doesn't smell very much. It's very soft to the touch. Um, it does itch a little bit, especially the cheaper merino wool products. Uh, if you go up a little bit in price, usually they're very good value. Um, just be sure to wash them on the gentle cycle if you decide to go for them. Another good fabric for travel, especially for packing really light, is uh, rayon or bamboo fabric. Uh, you can find usually blends uh, with other types of stuff too, but it's very soft to the touch and has many of the same benefits uh, as the merino wool. Um, as you know, wool is very, it keeps the heat in, like it's, it retains heat very well. So if you're a person that gets cold easily, merino wool is great. Bamboo fabric does not keep the heat 
in as well, but it's also a really good option in that it's a lot cheaper and uh, frankly it's also softer to the touch. So if you like that, um, I think bamboo is a fantastic option. So yeah, I've been experimenting a lot with different fabrics. Uh, if you've been a long time follower of the channel, I'm sure you're aware of it. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't be using just normal uh, cotton products. If you want to travel like a minimalist, it's totally fine. Mm. The only thing is that uh, if you travel this lightly and you stay over a longer period of time, um, there will be another problem for you, and that is that your clothes are going to get uh, dirty. So how do we deal with this? Well, you could use these type of fabrics that keeps the smell away from longer. But realistically, if you travel with leather clothing, you're gonna have to wash your clothes frequently. So I do carry a cotton roll here as well. I've been experimenting with cotton as well as bamboo and uh, merino wool at the same time. And I will say that uh, using cotton clothes is definitely the ones that smell the quickest. They don't have many benefits that the other types don't have. They are a little bit... Um, they keep their shape really well. That is one thing that I do like about cotton clothes. Um, but they smell quickly and uh, you're definitely going to need to bring more cotton clothes than you have to bring wool or uh, bamboo type fabrics. You also have like your synthetics, but I'm not going to go into that a lot. This is synthetic and I'm not very happy with it compared to other types of fabric. Uh, the masks, however, have been fantastic. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can show you how to roll up one of these cubes. I know I've done it in the past, but I'm sure some of you haven't seen that video. So uh, let's jump over to the GoPro here and I will show you how to do this. All right, guys. So how you want to do this is that you start with a t-shirt uh, laying face up like this. And then we're going to make the classical uh, fold under here. So you take your t-shirt and you make a pocket underneath. Uh, you don't really need to worry about uh, making it bigger than usual, so for example your 10 centimeters should be more than enough to accommodate everything inside here. Next step is that we're going to take the underwear and we're just going to lay it down here. You want to make sure that it doesn't overlap the bottom of the roll here. Um, so place it up as far as you can. Next we're going to take the socks and we're going to lay that on top of the underwear. I like to put the heel down as you probably know. <laughs> And just put it as far in towards the middle as possible, like this. And then from here it's pretty much the same as your t-shirt uh, burrito roll that we fold in the arms on top, like this. And you can split it in three parts or four parts, that's up to you. I like to do four parts for the, these travel rolls, as I do think it, it does build a little bit of bulk since you have both socks and underwear inside. Um, so I'm going to split it into four here, so folding one side in towards the middle like this, and then the other side as well. At this point, I'm gonna start rolling here, and we just roll it up, classic style here. Sorry about the wrinkles on this, this one is actually <laughs> dirty. So, like this, and when you reach the top here, grab hold of the entire roll, and you just flip it over in the classical style here, on both sides. And as you can see now, we have perfectly folded roll here, have everything you need for your day's uh, travel and if you combine it with another roll with your shorts made a dedicated video to that not gonna fold shorts as well and uh, yeah so yeah as you can probably imagine we start combining these rolls together with the compression packing tubes which compresses the clothes down even further you end up with a something that doesn't take up a lot of space at all um, another thing to think about is since I know many of you are just going to use cotton clothes, but if you want to use this as kind of inspiration, um, maybe try investing in something like bamboo clothes or even dry fit from uh, Uniqlo is also a good option on the budget. Uh, if you want to try out Merino wool, I do recommend uh, a brand called Janus, it's the one that lasts the longest. There are others out there as well, but that's the one that I recommend the most. And uh, that is a fantastic brand for clothing. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, I keep a bag for my laptop as well. Uh, I keep a, a little MacBook. Uh, it's the M1 MacBook Pro, so it's incredibly powerful for what you get. 
Uh, also, keep the computer bag because I don't want this to break. If this breaks, so I'm. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Also, in these coded times, you know, I need to keep a lot of documents. So, having one of these uh, is perfect for stuffing the documents inside with the computer. So next I want to talk a little bit about toiletries. This is a big one for many people. Um, many people are not comfortable traveling without their uh, specific brands of, uh, you know, your uh, your conditioner, your, uh, your this, your that. Uh, something that I want to make very clear is that people around the world pretty much have the exact same needs wherever you go. So if you end up down in Asia somewhere um, and you don't have sunscreen, you're going to be able to get it. Now it may not be perfect, but it's still going to work out. So usually I like to think, so for example, I won't pack um, mosquito spray. I won't bring that with me. I won't drag it around. If I need mosquito spray, I will pick it up. Same goes for soap and uh, usually hotels have soap. A conditioner, if they don't have conditioner in the hotel, I'll buy a little bottle, I'll use it up, and then, you know, I'll buy another one. If you really want to bring some specific products that you feel like you, that will make your trip more comfortable, I do recommend that you at least try to bring a small bottle of it instead of your big, uh, big, big bottle uh, from home. Mm. Travel size products are fantastic. Um, of course, your medicines, your, I do like to bring the most important, you know, uh, your ibuprofen, your uh, uh, imodium and uh, condoms, important things to keep um, in case some emergency starts. Uh, you don't want to find yourself without these things. I have some cool travel solutions there as well. I do like to keep the specific like daily use toiletries in a specific toiletry bag. Now another thing that I want to tell you if you like to travel with carry-on only, uh, this is a good tip. Get uh, toiletry bags that are transparent, that way you don't need to pull everything out when you come to the airport, you can just keep them in the toiletry bag. Uh, so yeah, some good toiletry solutions that I use. Um, I like to keep perfume, uh, I keep it in a tiny bottle so that it's under 10 milliliters, that way you can bring it on board the flight. Also, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Other things like classical crystal deodorant, fantastic as well. Um, keep small hair product. Uh, this is really cool. This is a travel toothbrush. Open this up, pull out the toothbrush, and you're good. It takes up half the space. Also, it keeps clean uh, inside its little container here. Small. Little comb. Actually, I found this comb in a hotel in Vietnam like five years ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what else? Uh, this is for mosquitoes um, to soothe the pain. Uh, I found that you can actually bring uh, scissors onto the plane, but they need to be a certain size. I'm not sure about it, but usually it will say travel size. So I like this pair a lot since it folds up. You can't uh, hurt yourself. So when you need it, you just unfold it and you're good to go. Then when you're done, you know. Actually, I will try to find some links that I can add to all this stuff. So if you want to get any of these uh, products, like the packing cubes uh, or anything, I will... Yeah, I'm going to link everything. So you can find it underneath in the description. And um, what else do we have here? <laughs> I have so much stuff for having such a small bag, I think. Uh, electronics bag, also pretty simple. I keep chargers, also I keep the GoPro in here and the phone stuff. Keep, um, always keep uh, headphones. Preferably they would be sound uh, dampening as well so that you can sleep if it's noisy. I like to keep an HDMI cable. This trip I haven't really used it so it's been kind of a waste to bring it but usually it's nice to have HDMI cable so you can hook up to your uh, computer. And uh, yeah, just Mac dongles. These things for your phone. If you're going abroad, like I know in Europe, uh, we have like a shared uh, plan with entire Europe, uh, European countries. But if you go like to Asia or something, having these is super handy. 
so that you can change your SIM cards to a local one and, and then pop in your uh, SIM card from back home if you need to use it for your banking or any type of IT. And uh, yeah, here I just keep some uh, recording stuff. I also keep a Razer, a uh, full-sized uh, buzzer. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep a full-sized eraser as well, uh, and always two pairs of sunglasses. I've burned myself too many times on this one, only bringing one pair of sunglasses. Let me tell you. So now I always carry two pairs. Oh, and I never really forgot. One of you uh, new subscribers asked me yesterday um, what I think about barefoot shoes. So in a previous video, I said I didn't really like them very much. Um, but I have been giving them a second chance on this trip um, mostly because they pack down really nicely and uh, You know they don't have a lot of support. These are the vivo barefoot something. I don't remember uh, But I have actually been pretty happy with them. Usually I wear full-sized uh, normal running shoes like uh, the, the Adidas uh, what are you called ultra boost, but yeah, I think I can recommend uh, barefoot shoes again, actually. So, uh, yeah. What should you take away from all of this? Well, the first thing is that if you're going to pack lightly, reduce the amount of clothes that you bring. So reduce your large items like your pants, your shorts, and this type of stuff first. Maybe if you normally bring two pairs of pants, cut down to one. If you normally bring four pairs of shorts, you know, maybe two is enough. These are large items and they take up a lot of space, especially when you start um, packing a small bag. Uh, reducing the amount of like underwear and socks and this type of stuff doesn't really reduce the space a whole lot. Um, t-shirts, you know, this type of stuff, reducing the amount of t-shirts like this undershirts and this type of stuff doesn't really reduce the amount of space your stuff takes up a whole lot. So start by focusing on the large items first and after that try to move on to like your uh, toiletries, try to bring small stuff, cut out the stuff that you don't really need to bring. Of course medicines and this, this type of stuff should always be kept uh, with you, don't make that mistake. Um, yeah you could consider using the packing cubes, I've been a huge fan of these since I started using them. And uh, yeah, definitely try to fold your clothes up in the rules. That's one of the biggest tips that I could give you. Uh, besides that, is there anything more that we haven't talked about? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe money. Um, so when it comes to money, I would say uh, there are two options. Mostly you can either get um, an ATM card and withdraw from the ATMs. Uh, this usually comes with some fees. So definitely make sure that you're uh, your car doesn't charge fees from home because if you char get local fees as well as fees back home from withdrawing money it's gonna get very expensive very quickly uh, the other option is to bring like a stack of cash mm, this has the advantage of you not needing to pay fees usually you can get some pretty good exchange rates as well if you feel comfortable looking around a little bit uh, the downside Obviously is that you need to bring a whole stack of cash with you, which has its own drawbacks, especially when you start bringing other expensive items as well. So definitely make sure that you have a good travel insurance if you're going to do that or, you know, take some precautions. And uh, yeah, I know this has been a bit of a different video from uh, the ones that I usually do. But if you did enjoy it, let me know and I can, uh, I can make another one for the next trip. I always like to change up the the way that I travel and uh, yeah. If you want to see more videos like this, you can check out my second channel. Uh, also, I just created like one of these membership things on YouTube. So if you want to support the channel with like uh, a couple of bucks a month, you can now do it. That's not to say you have to, but it's an option now and I have some nice perks for you as well. So yeah, for now, uh, signing out from Thailand. I'll see you back in Norway next week.